Gary Vee's old personal trainer, Jordan Syatt, did a personal experiment on himself on losing weight with a calorie deficit. He ate a Big Mac for every single day for a month and still lost weight, 7 pounds to be specific, by putting himself in a calorie deficit and ate less calories than his maintenance intake. Now he ate Big Macs, which we can all agree are pretty unhealthy, but what does a calorie deficit look like while eating healthier food instead? Like something like a Mediterranean diet, for example. Today's clinical trial looks exactly at that, so let's jump right into it. What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at another clinical trial, and this one's looking at the effects of a Mediterranean diet in a calorie deficit versus a normal conventional diet in people with high cholesterol levels. This study was published in September of 2021 by doctors Da Hai Sun and Ji Won Lee and others at the Yonsei University in Seoul, South Korea. Now, you've probably heard of a Mediterranean diet, but to summarize, it basically has guidelines on what classes of foods to eat. It's also supported by the Heart Association, or the American Heart Association, because it's pretty healthy. This diet focuses on fruits and veggies, whole grains and beans, and it includes low-fat dairy products and fish, and it really tries to limit sugars, sugary beverages. Coincidentally, I did talk about the negative effects of those in my last video, but also it excludes highly processed foods and other similar negative foods. Honestly, I don't see this as a diet. I see this just more as a normal healthy eating habits, but maybe that's what a diet technically is. But general diets like this are known to help reduce risks of heart diseases and lower cholesterol levels and alleviate other concerns. But as I discussed before, there is this relatively newer school of thought of eating in a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is when you eat less calories than what your body requires. In turn, your body starts burning its own fat for energy since it's not getting enough exogenously and in turn you lose weight. Today's study focuses on what happens to cholesterol, liver fat, insulin responsiveness, and other factors if you eat in a calorie deficit and eat a Mediterranean diet as opposed to a conventional diet. Let's break it down. Taking a look at the study design, this study was a randomized crossover study with 99 individuals. All participants had to have clinically high levels of cholesterol based on total cholesterol, LDL, or triglycerides, and participants couldn't have a history of cancer, high, or high blood pressure, liver problems, diabetes, or kidney disease. The average BMI of the study was 25 and the average age was 45. There were two main study periods, a control group where you had a normal diet and an intervention group where subjects ate a Korean-style Mediterranean diet, or KMD, that were in a calorie deficit. From figure one in this chart, in this paper, you can see that the first participants started out in one group for four weeks, had a washout period of two weeks where blood markers went back to normal, then they switched to the other group. Everyone basically acted as their own control or baseline, and this is what it really means to have a crossover trial. People in the KMD group were delivered food daily for lunch and dinner, and figure A1 here shows examples of what that looks like, what I already talked about, what a Mediterranean diet includes. They were required to eat a standardized breakfast, and all the foods had a carb-protein fat ratio of 5, 2 to 3, and the control group ate a conventional diet, uh, had a normal breakdown of macromolecules, which is also shown here. To actually measure calories, participants would recall what they ate in a 24-hour period, and that calculated total calories and nutrients. All participants were also recommended to do 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week, so there was a small exercise component of this. Figure 2 here shows when things were measured. They measured body weight, BMI measures of fat mass for body compositions. Questionnaires were looked at to measure physical activity, smoking, alcohol consumption, food intake, and a screener that measured the adherence to a KMD diet to make sure it was actually accurate. Blood markers measured white blood cell counts, cholesterol levels, insulin levels, and respective insulin resistance. They measured high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and they also used this equation measuring fatty liver index, which is basically approximating how much liver fat you have. Let's take a look and see what they found. Taking a look at the results, the KMD group ate 1,200 calories a day and the control group had 1,500, which was a significant difference, and you can see that here with the respectively wide confidence intervals. Looking at figure four, effectively everything was less in the KMD group. In the KMD group, total cholesterol, HDL, and LDL significantly decreased as compared to the control group when adjusting for age, energy intake, and alcohol consumption weight and BMI also significantly fell. The cardiometabolic parameters, like what white blood cell count, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, HSCRP, insulin resistance, and fatty liver index also significantly decreased as compared to the control group. Breaking down these results that I just shouted out at you guys, reduced cholesterol is great for your heart health. HDL levels did fall, sort of, and since 
good cholesterol is good. You do want more of it. It is more complex than this. But simply put, whenever looking at diagnosing high cholesterol, which is called dyslipidemia, LDL is the main criteria um, when you're looking for treatments and medications. So looking at HDL levels is less important, but technically after adjusting for weight loss, HDL didn't fall. It was just more proportionate to the weight change. When looking at white blood cell count and HSCRP, reductions are traditionally healthier for your immune system. When you get sick, white blood cells skyrocket. So when you're healthy, they need to be lower. HSCRP is a marker for inflammation, so typically you want less inflammation, which is also healthier. Having lower insulin resistance is also healthier and can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. And the lower fatty liver index is also much better because it reduces the risk of developing various liver diseases. Both of these I have talked about in a previous video. Reductions in insulin sensitivity were also proportionate to weight change. Overall, these are very healthy results. This also shows that a KMD improves metabolic markers beyond the typical improvement that comes with weight loss since the markers were adjusted for weight changes. So explaining my thoughts, I really like this study for a couple different reasons. First, it provides a simple, healthy way of reducing cholesterol if you have cholesterol problems. Second, it illustrates the healthier results of eating according to a Mediterranean diet relative to not. Third, if you do eat in a calorie deficit for the purpose of eating healthier or losing weight, the study outlines some of the results that could happen when approximately following this Mediterranean diet. I especially liked that the study had participants in a pretty strong calorie deficit, 1,200, really low relative to 1,500, and so these are results after a strong weight cut. Now, there have been other studies out there that look at Mediterranean diets versus low-fat diets or low-carb diets, and the results of this study are pretty consistent with everything out there. However, there are very few studies that actually provide prepared meal packages, so this study was more controlled in that regard. There is actually a very massive long-term clinical trial that looked at a calorie deficit on its own as opposed to with a Mediterranean diet. It's called Calorie, and you can Google it if you want, but I'll be posting a few, vi a few videos on that trial in the coming weeks. The main things I would like to comment on this study were actually discussed as limitations in the paper. I would have loved to see a longer intervention, longer than four weeks. I would want to see a larger sample size than 99. And I would prefer to measure blood samples after the first period as shown in figure two at the end of period one. Finally, this study did look at high cholesterol, people with high cholesterol as opposed to purely healthy people. So the results can realistically look different if you are completely healthy already. Jumping to this last section, why does this matter? What are the key points? This crossover clinical trial looked at a Mediterranean diet intervention in a cal calorie deficit versus a conventional normal diet. They found that the intervention group reduced white blood cell count, insulin resistance, and an inflammatory marker and lost weight. After adjusting for weight loss, total cholesterol LDL levels also decreased with reductions in risk for having a fatty liver. This showed that a calorie-restricted Mediterranean diet intervention improves lipids and can help reduce risks of heart problems. Other studies have been done on Mediterranean diets, but this is the first one to look at a significant calorie deficit. This shows that a calorie deficit doesn't negatively affect you in conjunction with eating healthy, and it could help with respect to medi mediating some of those effects and those risks that we've talked about. Maybe if you need to lose weight, lower your cholesterol, or help reduce your risk to those discussed diseases, this is something to talk to your doctor about. But I'm definitely not here to make recommendations. I'm not a doctor, but I'm here to simply review and explain publicly available clinical trials so that you can learn more and gain more knowledge and get more respective power. But that's all I really had for today. All the sources, papers, and trials I've discussed are below, along with the link to Jordan Syatt's video on his Big Mac diet. Totally recommend that. That's a really cool video. But subscribe if you want more content and like and comment to support the channel. And I hope you guys all learned something and have a good one. Thanks.